In our Not Rock type video, we went over a bunch of fossil Pokemon and just grouped them up and said, hey, they have rock-like characteristics and, you know, they were fossils, so they're rock. But why would they be rock? That is the real question here. Some of them don't make sense as to why they are rock. Like Archeops, it's a bird. So then, were all ancient Pokemon rock type, or does the process of fossilization and then being brought back to life cause them to gain the rock type? That's what we're going to find out today on Noggin. Okay, so let's start by getting the Pokemon that work as rock type even if they were not fossilized. You know, the ones that make sense. Here we have Craniados and Rampardos, and that's it. Every other Pokemon that's a fossil doesn't perfectly fit there as rock type. Save a few exceptions, I suppose, like Ammonite's hard shell could give it a rock type, I guess. But really, there are other Pokemon that have hard and even harder shells that aren't rock type. I mean, Shelder's shell is supposedly harder than diamonds. You know, a kind of stone. And yet Shelder isn't rock type. So now we actually need to get into this theory. Sorry if it's a bit bare bones right now, but I'm sure we can put some meat on it. So why are the fossil Pokemon rock type? Well, all of them come from fossils, right? It's in their categorical names. And fossils are just rocks shaped like a skeleton or tissue left by the organic matter. Somehow, all the Jurassic Park scientists in the Pokemon world have come up with a way to revive Pokemon from just fossils. So what if this revival process adds the rock type as a side effect? In essence, these Pokemon weren't rock type to begin with. Bear with me here. It's much like how many other Pokemon have been changed by humans in some shape or way. Take a look at Wormadam. It's able to become steel type because of its environment in human cities. So it doesn't take much to change a Pokemon's typing, it seems. You could also take Genesect, a fossil Pokemon that was altered by Team Plasma. Its typing is now Bug Steel, and we can see why it gains these traits. Its bug-like body and appearance, and its steel outer shell along with its drive cannon. So who's to say it wasn't Bug Rock or Bug Water, possibly something entirely different when it was non-extinct millions of years ago? This addition of rock in fossil Pokemon is plausible due to pre-mineralization. We talked about this a bit with Sudowoodoo in the rock type video. This process replaces organic material buried underground with minerals, creating the hardened outline of bone. But let's really dig into this for a second. I mean, you're here to learn, so why not learn some stuff about dinosaur remains? Let's get into the nitty gritty. So, pre-mineralization happens when a material, be it plant matter or an animal, gets buried under the ground for a long time. Due to the flow of water through the material, minerals get carried by the water and deposited in place of the decaying organic materials, essentially creating a mineral internal cast of the tissue, a skeleton of what was. Now in plants, this process can preserve many pieces of information as plant cell walls are a bit more hardy than the squishy flesh walls. Now after premineralization occurs, this tissue is fossilized. It now has similar characteristics to rocks and minerals. And since these fossils are used in the revival process, their entire skeletons may get made from this rocky fossil substance. And this perhaps causes the Pokemon to gain a new typing. Rock. Thus, all fossil Pokemon are rock. Or perhaps these scientists do not have a complete genetic map of the Pokemon. So they filled in the blanks with the more simplistic rock Pokemon DNA, giving it the rock typing. Much like in Jurassic Park, they didn't have all of the dinosaur DNA, so they just filled the gaps with some frog, which did have some side effects. But then, if most of these fossil Pokemon were not rock type back in the ancient times, then what would their types have been? Let's theorize about that for a moment. Let's start with Ammonite and Amistar. Beyond the water typing, they could realistically be rock type before the process because of their armor shell, but as stated, that's pushing it a little bit. Kabuto and Kabutops I could see as being the same typing as Wimpod and Golisopod. Bug water, that is, as they too are based off of the trilobite horseshoe crab. These are a common type of anthropod that lived on the sea floor, and the last time I checked, most anthropods in Pokemon are at least bug type. Aerodactyl is an interesting case. This guy pretty much is only rock type because 
I, I guess because it looks like a dinosaur. So perhaps in its natural state, it should be Flying Dragon. I mean, Lance has one for goodness sake. You know, the Dragon Master. Being based off of the prehistoric animal, the Pterodactyl may point somewhat to its rock flying typing. Its skin may be as tough as rock, perhaps? Hmm. Moving on to Cradilly and Lilip, these little plants could easily have had water be their second typing after grass instead of rock. They are sea lilies, after all, and it's said that they attach themselves to rocks on the seafloor, not that they are rocks. Sheesh. Anorith and Armaldo, the old shrimp Pokemon, <laughs> that's kind of mean, Pokedex, are based off of anthropods. Well, sort of. Anomalocaris are a commonly confused relative of the anthropod, but anyway, these Pokemon could easily be some combination of bug, water, or steel. The water being there based off of the Pokedex entries explaining how it swims so well through the water. Shieldeon and Bastiodon should be ground steel. Almost every other heavy set armored Pokemon is either rock, steel, or ground. And this particular Pokemon used to live in jungles, which don't sound too rocky to me. And in recent Pokedex entries, it's stated that only the face is ever found, meaning that its body must be rather soft, therefore not easily fossilized, meaning that all of its hardness is in its face. So I would say steel ground. Tortuga and Caracosta would be just water. I could see it possibly being rock due to its shell, but this turtle Pokemon is most likely based off of the leatherback sea turtle as both come to shore to lay eggs and both are able to dive to incredible depths. So this Pokemon could be water ground as they do dig nests in the sand, and it's also noted that they are able to hunt on the ground near the water, even though it just has slippers. So yeah, maybe water ground. Archon and Archeops, much like Gligar and Glissor, are Pokemon that can't really fly, even though it's a flying type. Instead, it uses its wings as stabilizers for when it runs super fast, and to get extra air when jumping, much like how modern day scientists think raptors used their wings. These Pokemon do seem to have a rocky hard beak, but really, what bird doesn't have a hard beak? That's kind of the point. Also, running at high speeds is normally attributed with being ground type in the Pokemon world. Side note, I could see Archeops being just ground type, whereas Archon could be flying ground, as it likes to hop from tree to tree, gliding in between. Tyrant and Tyrantrum would possibly be dark dragon, due to the way they are said to have behaved, and behave nowadays. Throwing tantrums constantly and just overall being violent and big and dragony. Amara and Aurorus were brought back from samples that were frozen. So right away, theoretically, their ice typing may also be just because of the revival process. But based off of the Pokedex entries, they seem to have been a peaceful group that lived in the snow. Why reptilian beings lived in the cold, I'm not gonna question. But based off of their appearance, I could see them being a monotype of just ice. But if you had to give them a second type, it could possibly be fairy due to their ability to create an Aurora Borealis. So, in the case of all those Pokemon, they may not have been rock type in initially, but got the rock type via the fossilization and revival process. But what if that wasn't the case? What if they were all rock type back in the day too? Well, why would that be? Well, it could be because the entire world started as rock type and thus the first bulk of Pokemon started out as rock type and diversified from there. The idea is that rock was one of the original types along with water during the prehistoric age. Both of these types later branched out and created the types we know today, and thus, all of these Pokemon are rock type due to the fact that almost everything was rock type back then. Imagine a world much like our own in its infancy even before water had condensed, before meteorites brought microbes, or even before the planet has formed. It was just a huge undulating mass of molten rock. As it cools and hardens and the planet becomes rocky, really rock type Pokemon are the only ones that would survive here. So Arceus and Mew got to work planting the first Pokemon rock type Pokemon. Archon here is actually stated as the ancestor of almost all flying Pokemon, though that theory is under scrutiny in later Pokemon games, but perhaps it was the first Pokemon to branch out of rock type and gain the flying type. This idea can stretch into the idea that most life on Earth back then was more similar, much less diverse than it is today. On our Earth for a long time, the most common type of animal were reptiles, dinosaurs. Similarly, for whatever reason, rock types thrived in early Pokemon Earth. 
And after all, so far, only well-preserved rock-type Pokémon have been found in good enough shape to be revived and given to trainers. It is also very possible that rock-type Pokémon at the time were just at an evolutionary advantage, perhaps due to the climate that was prehistoric Poké-Earth. Take a gander at the living fossil Pokémon Relicanth. This thing is old! Apparently, it survived extinction for millions of years. It's water rock type. And we can all see that this fish is practically a fossil at this point. This could be some evidence that rock type Pokemon were a much larger demographic back then. Just imagine a world where every Pokemon is rock type to some degree. That's what seems to be the case here. But back to the main theory, another possibility is that the revival process for fossil Pokemon only works on once rock type Pokemon due to a limitation in how it works. It could be that rock type Pokemon have a more simplistic cell structure or a simpler DNA sequence that is more easy to replicate. It could be that less of the DNA went missing as it was preserved completely. Written in stone, as it were. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> this could be caused by the rock parts of the Pokémon not necessarily needing to be fossilized. So it lost no organic material. Organic with quotes on it, though, because we don't truly understand if rock-type Pokémon are just sentient rocks or if they actually have internal systems, like blood and organs and stuff. So we can only theorize that they wouldn't be totally degraded by the premineralization process. And just to throw a rock in your gears, let me remind you that Mega Aerodactyl makes all of this extra complicated. <laughs> oh geez, I totally forgot about Mega Aerodactyl. Uh, so upon Mega evolving, all of these stones spike out of Mega Aerodactyl, which begs loads of questions, especially with Mega Aerodactyl's Pokedex entries. Some of these state, Mega Evolution awakened some dormant genes, bringing back the sharp rocks that once covered Aerodactyl's entire body. Part of its body has become stone. Some scholars claim that this is Aerodactyl's true appearance. So hang on, because a few of these Pokedex entries prove a few things. First of all, by stating that now part of its body has become stone, that means it certainly wasn't before. But secondly, some scholars think that in ancient times, Aerodactyls actually had these stones popping out of them, covering their bodies normally. Could the same then be true of other fossil Pokémon? Were Tyrantrums covered in stone? Ancient Caracostas with awesome stone goatees and eyebrows? Could be! But then why don't they anymore? So here's the theory. Remember how in Jurassic Park the dinosaur DNA had to have gaps filled in with frog DNA, which later was explained as to why the dinosaurs looked different? Because, after all, most dinosaurs had feathers. And in Jurassic World, the difference between the real original dinosaurs and their dinosaurs was because of the process of bringing them back, splicing DNA. Perhaps, in the process of bringing these fossil Pokémon back, they actually lose a lot of their rockier traits such as rocks being a part of their body. They are still as tough as rocks per se, and may have fossil-like bones and thus are still rock type, but externally it's not that obvious because their DNA was spliced with some other non-rock type DNA. Likely because, well, I just think it's probably a little difficult to extract DNA from a rock. Not sure though, I haven't exactly tried it. So just as the Jurassic Park dinosaurs lost their feathers upon being revived, these dinosaur Pokémon lost their external rocks. And the reason they all had these rocks is due to what was mentioned before. Having these rocks was an evolutionary advantage, and rock was likely one of the very first types in the evolution of Pokémon. So there you have it. Those are the theories as to why the fossil-type Pokémon are all rock-type. And knowing Game Freak, it could even be just because they're all from the Stone Age. Ha <laughs> ha! But anywho, thanks so much for watching, and until next time, please remember to never stop using your noggin.